I've traveled all over trying to find the legendary Twilight Caves. It's said that no adventurer has ever gotten out alive, but I, Spicy Raider, am more than qualified to take on such a task. Unfortunately, it seems the locals want nothing to do with me, and have advised me to stop my search. <laughs> Cowards, I say. I am not so simple to be stopped by superstition and fairy tales. And now, I find myself in front of my greatest adventure yet. Whoa. Incredible. Easy. Okay. Okay. Big breaths, come on. Uncharted territory, let's go. This was carved directly into the mountain. Incredible. Whoa, what the? <coughs> Ooh. All right. What was that? <coughs> All right. Not going back that way, that's for sure. All right. Hmm. There's some sweet monsters down here. I gotta be careful. Holy crap! Okay, go, go. Ah! Ah, what's happening? Oh my god! Oh god, please! Oh god. Oh crap, help! Woo! Oh. I'm so glad that worked. Here, so might as well. What the f Good evening, everybody. My name is Spacey Raider. Welcome to another mod showcase. Today, we're looking at Twilight Forest, a 1.20.1 Forge mod created by Benimatic. This mod adds a new progression based dimension to Minecraft. This dimension is filled with new biomes, new bosses, and fun new challenges. To start with this mod, you're gonna need to create a portal to the Twilight Forest. Start by digging a 2x2 hole with grass, dirt, potzel, or mycelium around it. Then fill it with water and top it up with flowers or mushrooms. Then finally you drop a diamond in the pool, and lightning will strike, turn it into a portal. Inside the forest, you will find that there is no night and day cycle. This is because the forest is forever shrouded in twilight. Aggressive mobs will not spawn, so it's mostly a peaceful dimension. Now. There are multiple new areas that increase in difficulty and are controlled by a specific boss. Be careful, the portal can sometimes form in one of these areas, so you will be in danger. You will also find new peaceful animals in the forest that mirror the ones in the overworld, like wild boars instead of pigs and wild deer instead of cows. You will also find squirrels and birds. First thing you're gonna wanna do is get some iron wood to make yourself some armor and tools. In order to get some iron wood, you will need to mine a little. No worries though, this dimension doesn't really go super far down, so it won't be a long mining trip. While mining, you might find some roots with a greenish texture. That's how you get your first material, live root. By combining the live root with iron and golden nuggets, you will get raw iron wood. And if you cook it, you will get iron wood ingots. After that, you will need a magic map. This will help you navigate the Twilight Forest. To craft that, you will need a magic map focus. And to get the magic map focus, you will need glowstone dust, torch berries, found in the same caves as the live root, and a raven feather. You can find these ravens near obsidian monoliths. Let's talk about the mods progression now. In the Twilight Forest, you will find multiple new areas that you must complete in a certain order. Careful, attempting to visit these areas and dungeons out of order will be prevented by barriers or detrimental effects. That said, there are some areas that are not locked into this progression, like hedge mazes, hollow hills, quest groves, mushroom castles, and leaf dungeons. The Naga Courtyard. This is where you find the first real boss of the Twilight Forest, the Naga. A giant snake mob that will slither around the courtyard and will try to kill you. The more you damage it, the faster it will become. However, it will also lose segments of its body. The Naga will lose interest in enemies that leave the courtyard, so keep that in mind for strategy. Once beaten, the Naga will drop the Naga Trophy and dozen Naga Scales. You will also gain access to the Lich Tower. 
And hey, if you want some better armor, why not use those scales to make some leggings and a chest plate? The Lich Tower Pretty easy to spot, a giant tower is where you're gonna wanna go next. This tower is protected by a force field that will disappear once you beat the Naga and get a scale. The Lich Tower is a massive structure full of dangerous mobs and valuable loot. At the top of the tower, in a giant boss room, there's where you'll find the next boss. The crowned skeleton, the Twilight Lich. This file will be split into three stages, so be prepared for a long fight. In the first stage, the Lich will be protected by shields and will use a scepter of Twilight. He will also shoot ender pearls and fireball projectiles. These ender pearls can be reflected back at the Lich and will destroy the shields around it. There will also be two Lich shadows that are invincible and will shoot you with the same projectiles. After bringing down all the shields, you will enter stage 2. In stage 2, the Lich will use a zombie scepter to summon Lich minions or zombies until he runs out of charges. The two Lich shadows will disappear at this point and the Lich will become vulnerable to attacks. It's recommended you wait until the zombie scepter is depleted before attempting to go after the Lich. Once the scepter is gone, you will enter the third and last stage of the fight. In this last stage, the Lich will wield a golden sword, and he will try to make you meet the hamster that your mom said escaped all those years ago. Once defeated, the Lich will drop the Lich trophy, some items, and one of the four scepters. Either the zombie scepter, the scepter of twilight, the scepter of fortification, or the scepter of life draining. This will also allow you access to the next areas, the swamp, the dark forest, and the snowy forest. The Twilight Swamp. This is the next step in the Twilight Forest progression. If you try to enter the Twilight Swamp before beating the Lich, you will be shrouded in a black mist that will inflict hunger on you. Also, you won't be able to explore the Labyrinth. You can find entrances on the surface. Once inside, you will find treasure, monsters, and you will probably get lost a couple times. To avoid this, make sure to craft a maze map. To craft it, you will need paper and a maze map focus, which can be found in chests inside the Labyrinth. Be careful of tripwire chests when exploring, by the way. The goal of this dungeon is to kill its boss, the Minoshroom. Deep at the bottom of the labyrinth, the Minoshroom is a large boss mod and a hybrid between a Minotaur and a Mushroom. There are no tricks to this fight, just kill him. Do be careful of his charge attack. Once defeated, the Minoshroom will drop a few balls of Mif Stroganov and a Minotaur Axe. Once you drink the Stroganov, you will gain access to the Fire Swamp. The Fire Swamp. This biome is similar to the Twilight Swamp, except, you know, fire. If you attempt to enter this biome before defeating the Minoshroom and eating the strong enough, you will be burned to a crisp. Inside the Fire Swamp, you will find the lair of your next boss, the Hydra Lair. The lair will look like a massive hollow hill that has been cut open to allow the next boss to sit comfortably, the Hydra. This is an immobile boss monster that looks like a giant three-headed snake dragon. The Hydra will attack you with its fire breath, explosive projectiles, and it will try to bite you if you get too close. The trick to this fight is to attack its open mouth with close distance projectiles. You can also try to attack the body, but you will do significantly less damage. Once the head takes too much damage, it will explode. However, since, you know, it's a Hydra, the head will be replaced by two more heads. Once defeated, the Hydra will drop a Hydra trophy, dozens of Hydra Chops, and a vial of Fury Blood. The Fury Blood will be your first step to unlocking the Highlands. The Dark Forest Our next destination is a dark forest, a biome covered in a thick roof of dark wood leaves. This biome is really really dark, and if you try to enter it before killing the Lich and the Hydra, you will be affected by blindness. Although this can be circumvented by using a night vision potion. In the Dark Forest, you will find two dungeons with their own boss, the Goblin Knight Stronghold and the Dark Tower. The Goblin Knight Stronghold. This dungeon has multiple fake entrances, but only one is the correct one. To figure out which one it is, you need to find the latent trophy pedestal in front of the right entrance. Once you place a boss trophy on it, it will open. You can get your trophy back after that. In the depths of the Stronghold, you will find a big room with the next boss in your list, the Knight Phantom. This boss will fight you in a group of six Cyrus floating skeletons that will attack you by spinning in circles to confuse you. The phantoms will throw various tools around the room and at you. To fight this boss, you will need to attack the knight that currently has the physical body of the knight phantom. He will be more opaque than the rest. Each time you defeat one of the phantoms, they might drop a phantom armor piece and the physical body will move over to the next one until none remain. Once defeated, a chest will spawn in the middle of the room which usually contains enchanted phantom armor and enchanted knightly tools. Once you defeat this boss, you will gain access to the Dark Tower. 
The Dark Tower Picking above the dark forest leaves, the Dark Tower is a massive structure that houses loot and monsters, and at the very top you will find the next boss, the Urghast. A massive gas with extra tentacles and an anger management issue. The Urghast will attack you by flying around and shooting massive fire blows at you. He also has a gas tier attack and will summon gaslings. To beat this boss you can attack him directly with ranged weapons or you can try to activate the gas traps scattered around the Dark Tower rooms. The gas traps will be protected by gaslings, but killing them will charge the trap. After it is fully charged, you can activate it with a redstone signal, which will shoot a red beam that will deal massive damage to the Urghast. Once defeated, a chest will spawn that contains the Urghast trophy, some Carminite and Fire Tears, the second step towards unlocking the Highlands. The Snowy Forest Similar to a taiga biome in the overworld, this biome is covered in snow and filled with spruce trees. If you try to enter the snowy forest before beating the Lich and the Urghast, you will freeze and move much lower. This snowy wonderland usually surrounds the glacier biome, but before you can enter that one, we need to beat another boss, the Alpha Jetty. You need to beat the Urghast before fighting the Alpha Jetty. The Alpha Jetty will spawn in Jetty layers, but it won't be alone, a group of Jetties will be there too. The Alpha Jetty will have two stages of attack. In the first, the Alpha Jetty will shoot Ice Bombs at you, which leaves an area of damage. Make sure to get out as soon as possible. The Alpha Jetty will also be immune to arrow damage, so don't even try. That leaves only one option, melee damage. Be careful though, if you get too close to the Alpha Jetty, he will attempt to fill you away. Once enough damage has been dealt, the Alpha Jetty will enter its rampaging stage. He will flail his arms and jump. This will destroy blocks around him. It will go on for several seconds before the Alpha Jetty gets tired and sits down. This will be your opportunity to deal as much damage as possible. Once defeated, the Alpha Jetty will drop 6 pieces of Alpha Jetty fur and 6 ice bombs. This will also unlock the next biome in your path, the Glacier. The Glacier. Surrounded by the snowy forest, the Glacier is a giant structure made of ice that towers over the Twilight Forest. If you try to enter the Glacier without first beating the Alpha Jetty, you will be frozen. This also happens to be the only place that spawns penguins. In this biome you will find the lair of the next boss, the Aurora Palace. A massive and colorful palace made of aurora blocks, the aurora palace is your next destination. To go up the tower you will need parkour skills, flight abilities or blocks, as stairs are rare going up. At the top of this beautiful structure you will find the stunning ruler of the glacier, the Snow Queen. During this battle the Snow Queen will drift up and down on her ice cloud. This ice cloud works both as a way to fly but also as a shield against attacks. In the first phase the Snow Queen will summon ice crystals. These mobs will attempt to overwhelm you while their queen heals. Once enough damage has been dealt, the Snow Queen will enter her second phase. She will extend her arms and shoot snow from her hands. She will also try to fly up and quickly fly down into the ground to try to crush you. Once defeated, the Snow Queen will drop the Snow Queen trophy, the Tri Bow and the Seeker Bow. Defeating her will also complete the last step towards unlocking the Highlands. The last biome in your journey through the Twilight Forest. Made majorly out of Uberius soil, the Highland housed the last three landmarks, the Troll Cave, the Cloud Cottages, and the Final Castle. If you try to enter the Highlands before beating the Urghast, the Hydra, and the Snow Queen, you will be attacked by a Veil of Acid Rain. In order to advance through the Highlands, you will need to get some magic beans so you can climb into the Cloud Cottages. High above the Highlands, the Cloud Cottages can be accessed by planting magic beans into the Uberius soil. This will create a giant beanstalk that you can climb up to the Cloud Cottage. Once there you can kill the giant miners, which will drop the giant pickaxe. Which you will need to go into the Troll Cave. Massive cave systems that sprawl beneath the highlands, the troll cave is where you will find the mushroom bolt. With the giant pickaxe you will be able to get into the bolt, and in there you will find the final item required to enter the final castle, the lamp of cinders. The thorn lands. A giant barrier of thorns that will grow back if you try to break them, the thorn lands surround the final castle. This barrier can be traversed by using the lamp of cinders to burn the thorns away. After using the lamp the thorns will turn into dust that will wither away when you touch them. The final castle. 
The final castle still hasn't been completed. There are some blocked doors that you can open by right clicking that seem to indicate that at some point you will need to get colored keys to open them to progress to the castle. At the top of the castle is where you will fight the final boss of this mod. Can't wait to see what it is! And that's it for the progression. Now let me just say, this is a special mod that has been a part of the Minecraft modding community for years and it honestly deserves all the love that it gets, and even more so. Remember that you can join their Discord to check up on updates and just tell them that they're doing a great job with this. I made this showcase as a small guide to the Twilight Forest, however there is much more to explore and many more mobs to fight. There's weapons and armor that you can get that I didn't mention, like you can see right here. However, I'll leave them as a surprise for you guys to find in your journey. In your own journey through the Twilight Forest. I 100% recommend you guys to install this mod, play it with your friends, hey how's it going? And just enjoy it! It's really 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 well made and it's really really good. That's all for me and I hope you guys have an awesome Christmas and an even better new year. Remember that we're trying to get 1k subs and 4000 hours of watch time by the end of the year. So expect more videos during this season. I'll see you guys next time. And that's all for me. Whoops. Bye bye.